When you go to a sporting event, the possibility of receiving a game used souvenir is a real one. And in most live events, if the ball flies into the stands, even with a few stipulations, you get to keep it. Unless you are at an NBA game where the only game used souvenir you are going to receive is either a player's sweat, their chewing gum, or maybe even a couple of right crosses. And one thing that is for damn sure that you will not get is an official game used NBA basketball because it simply doesn't happen. You won't be allowed to keep it and I'm about to tell you why. Now before you start typing in your reasons why you think you cannot keep a ball or what is actually true, this video will examine the NBA's policy around balls that go into the stands and the legal framework for why you can't keep the ball and what would happen if you tried to. First, let's look at why you can't have it. You might be looking for some easy reasons as to why this is. The NBA is cheap. The NBA hates their fans. The NBA doesn't want game used balls sold on eBay. The NBA is rigged and game balls have remote control devices in them. Though all of these are probably true, especially the last one, that's not the reason why you can't keep the ball. It's actually really simple and it makes sense. It's because they only use one ball for the entire game. Unless there is beer or some type of body fluid on it besides sweat, the ball is being used. On a side note, has anyone in the history of the NBA sweated more than Patrick Ewing? Anyways, the one ball policy has been in effect since the league began. And in fact, there are only a small amount of balls that are given to a team to start the season. 72 balls, and those are used for the entire year. It takes about three months of work up before a ball even makes it into the NBA, and they are pretty careful when it comes to their custody, handling, and grooming. All that attention for one ball. Some balls can even be used multiple times. So it seems like a pretty good reason that a fan can't keep the ball, but let's look at the legal reasoning behind why the NBA can keep your hands off their large sweat-covered balls. First, I searched for an official policy from the NBA, and there isn't one. There is only the official NBA fan code of conduct that was put in place after the malice in the palace and is actually enforced when dumbass fans run their mouths, etc. So nowhere in writing does the NBA explicitly state you can't keep the ball. But the ball does end up in the stands pretty often as a big swat or an errand pass or a very, very bad shot can end up in the expensive seats. Now let's imagine you are in the crowd and the ball comes towards you and you remember the Reuben rule from my last video. I'll recap it for you. In the early 20th century, a man named Reuben Berman sued the New York Giants baseball club when they tried to take the ball from him and ejected him from the stadium. He lost his original lawsuit, but the court ruled he could keep the ball. And from then on, fans could keep balls that flew into the stands. This rule, though not a law, generally applies to baseball, football, and hockey. Though really, the only thing that allows you to keep the ball is the threat of a lawsuit each time a ball goes into the stands and the general acceptance that this has been the procedure for a long time. However, in the NBA, there are many factors that go into what would happen if a fan legitimately tried to keep the ball. Number one, he or she is going to have to deal with the immediate crowd around them, telling them not to be an a-hole and give the darn ball back. Number two, if he is at a Bucks or Hornets game and there is no crowd around him, he's going to have to deal with very large men who want the ball back. And number three, as I mentioned before, the NBA code of conduct covers fans being a-holes and then whoever this ball keeping jackass is not only will be giving the ball back to security, they will be taking a walk outside. Believe that. But both these factors aside, what if the person was a lawyer and started screaming about his or hers rights and the Rubin rule? Well, it's never gotten to that level of outright psychopathic behavior from a fan, but it could present some pretty interesting legal arguments in court. Now, I'm not a lawyer, but if I were arguing against said fan who thinks the Rubin rule applies, these are the cases I would make. So I'm gonna pretend to be a lawyer now. Number one, the ball is property of the NBA. It is in the NBA rules that one ball is used and based on our limited supply of game balls, we reserve the right to keep it. It's the same as if a player's shoe or headband went in the stands. It belongs to them. Give it back. Gosh, I feel dirty pretending to be a lawyer, but I'm just gonna go with it. Number two, to get a little deeper, since all games are played indoors, we consider the arena to be a private environment and our policies supersede the rules and expectations of what a fan might experience in a public outdoor event. That might be a little dicey to argue, but I'd throw it out there if I were a lawyer. 
which I'm not. Number three, the NBA has had a one ball policy since its inception, and it is common understanding among all those involved, fans included, that the ball is to be returned to the court. It's the same argument of reasonable expectation that covers a baseball team when you park your car near a baseball field and when you end up with a baseball in your windshield. You knew the risk and you got a baseball in your windshield. Now, if you really want to sue to keep the ball, be my guess, but I think it's pretty simple the reason why you can't keep a ball that goes into the stands in the NBA. Did you like my video? Did you watch the one before about the NFL? Please leave a like, comment, or subscribe. And if you really like me, subscribe and hit that little bell with the notifications on it so you get notified right away when I upload. It's called the Notification Squad. It's so awesome. Anyways, I'm Five Points Vids, and you made it to the end of this video. When you go to a sporting event, the possibility of receiving a game used souvenir is a real one. And in most live events, if the ball flies into the stands, even with a few stipulations, you get to keep it. Unless you are at an NBA game where the only game used souvenir you are going to receive is either a player's sweat, their chewing gum, or maybe even a couple of right crosses. And one thing that is for damn sure that you will not get is an official game used NBA basketball because it simply doesn't happen. You won't be allowed to keep it. And I'm about to tell you why. Now, before you start typing in your reasons why you think